Hey, welcome back to Business 163 Personal Finance. We are now in video four of our module on investing. And now we start to really talk about uh, two broad categories of investments for us to begin thinking about. And so as you can see from the title slide, we're really asking the question, as an investor, do you want to be a lender or do you want to be an owner? And this is, a, I think, a very, very helpful way for us to think about categorizing different types of investments. Man, there are so many different types of investments out there, and we'll talk about that as we get further into this module. But the first two categories, I think, are very helpful for us to mentally think about the different types of investments that are out there. Do you want to be a lender or do you want to be an owner? Well, what do we mean by this? What we mean by this is, um, do you want to take your investment money and make it available to be lent out and then later repaid to you at a particular rate of interest. <coughs> and so that's one way for you to earn an investment return over time is to allow your money to be lent out to someone who wants to use it, who promises to pay you back with interest at a later date. That's one category of investment. Here's the second category. Rather than lending your money out, do you want to use your investment money to buy something of value that hopefully earns a return as it earns income for you and appreciates in value over time? As you can see here, these are two very different, at least um, theoretically, two very different ways to think about putting your investment money to work. Lending it out at a rate of interest and being repaid later or buying something that will appreciate in value and perhaps additionally provide you some income or some revenue while you're waiting for the thing to grow. All right, so what are some basic vehicles that fall into one of these two categories? Well, when we look at lending, here are some examples of types of investments uh, that, that actually lend your money out for someone else to use. There is, of course, the traditional bank account. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but what happens when you deposit money in a bank account? Well, what you are doing, if you, you know, let's say you have a savings account at, uh, or, or, or a CD, Certificate of Deposit at Bank of America, when you deposit that money in, Bank of America uses it to lend out to their customers in the terms, in, in what ways? Well, for instance, car loans or mortgage loans, right? Whatever types of loans that Bank of America might make. And then they collect the money back, right? When they collect the loan back, they charge interest. And of course, the difference or the spread between what they're collecting in interest and what they promised to pay you on your bank account, well, that's how they make a profit. But what you're doing in, 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 in theory, right, in concept, is you are allowing them to lend your money out and they promise to pay it back to you with interest. Well, there are other vehicles like this. That's essentially what a savings bond is. A savings bond is a promise to pay you a certain amount once that bond um, reaches maturity over time, right? And you buy it at a discount and allow the U.S. government to use that money during the time uh, in between your purchase and when they pay you back, right? The same is true with a government T-bill or a treasury bill. You are allowing the U.S. government to borrow money from you to do all the things that federal government needs to pay for, right? And that later they will pay you back with interest the sum that you lent to the U.S. government plus the interest as your reward for your investment. The same is true as with other government bonds, and by that we mean bonds like, well, municipal bonds or state bonds, which might be used to, well, what, uh, build a school or fix a highway, right? Um, and the same thing, you are allowing that municipality to borrow that amount and pay you back later with interest, right? And finally, the last category of a corporate bond, well, that's a company who is asking to borrow money, which they promise to repay to you many years later with interest. All of those are examples of uh, investment vehicles that you may have heard of, but you may not have thought of them conceptually as, well, I'm actually lending money to these entities and they're going to pay me back later. That's what lending as an investment looks like. Contrast that with, well, owning. 
buying, using your investment money to buy a share of ownership of something. What are those kinds of vehicles look like? Well, it can be, for instance, buying stock in a company. Um, as we'll look at in just a little mi a while uh, in another video, what is buying stock? You're buying a share of ownership, right? You are owning a piece of a company. Or some people use their investment funds to buy real estate, right? What are you doing? You are owning an asset which hopefully appreciates over time to a higher value. And the same thing, many folks use investment funds to buy a small business which grows in value over time. Um, by the way, I should tell you that just anecdotally, the world's wealthiest individuals more often than not have made and amassed their great riches through ownership of small businesses which have grown um, exponentially over time. Um, and that has been traditionally how most wealth um, is really accumulated um, in, in very large um, sums, right? And then second to small businesses is real estate. Those are really the two ways that the wealthy have traditionally grown wealthy, real estate and the ownership of small businesses. But you can see here, these are two very, very different ways to think about investing, right? One is, uh, quite frankly, the relatively safe route of lending out money to be repaid to you later. Of course, safety is relative and that depends upon whom you're lending the money to, right? Or owning an asset that will appreciate in value. And of course, remember we talked about, you know, good debt versus bad debt, right? That going into debt to purchase an asset that depreciates in value over time is what we categorized as a bad debt, right? Whereas here we have an example of a good debt or good investment, um, hopefully investing in an asset that will appreciate over time. So those are the two big broad categories that when we think about different types and options and investments, hopefully that makes sense to you and will help as we be continue to build this conceptual foundation of what to do and how to select different types of investments and investment options. Hope that's helpful. We'll see you in the next lecture.